inspiring because it tells stories that we can all relate to. But what inspired those stories? started. This is Anime Origins. A long time ago, in a distant land. Oops, wrong story. But a long time ago, in a distant land, there lived a bamboo cutter named Takitorino Ogina. And his name literally means the old man who harvests the bamboo. <laughs> kind of funny, right? Anyways... He's going to harvest the bamboo one day, and he finds a miniature baby in one of the shoots of bamboo. And brings him uh, brings the baby back to raise as his own. A beautiful little girl that he names Nayotake no Kaguya Hime, which means the shining princess in the supple bamboo. A fair name. Every day he goes to cut bamboo after that, he finds a nugget of gold in all every shoot of bamboo. Now Kaguya, Kaguya grows up and becomes extremely beautiful. And at one point, no, not two princes, sorry spin doctors, five princes come to uh, take her hand in marriage. And to these five princes, she issues impossible tasks. To the first one, she says to bring her the stone begging bowl of the Buddha Gautama Shakyamuni from India. To the second, a jeweled branch from the mythical island of Horai. The third, the legendary robe of the fire rat of China. The fourth, a colored jewel from a dragon's neck. And the fifth, a cowrie shell born of swallows. The first, the second, and the third all cease through this and discover that these are impossible tasks, and bring Kaguya fakes. But Kaguya, being wise, recognizes that these are all fakes and sends them away. The fourth gets lost in a storm, and the fifth dies trying. Now, about this time, the Emperor gets word and goes to see Kaguya and falls in love. But Kaguya says they are not of the same country. At night, she cries, and after some crazy behavior, reveals that she came from the moon people and must go back. Variations disagree, but most stories say that Kaguya was sent to Earth to pay for a crime, and that the goal that was in the shoots was to pay for her as kind of child support. Now, Kaguya writes notes, or er, the Emperor finding out that she is going to be sent back to the moon people, sends guards to fight the moon people, but they are blinded by a strange light. 
Kaguya writes notes to her parents and the Emperor apologizing. And on the Emperor, she puts some of the elixir of life. Uh, on the Emperor's note, she puts some of the elixir of life. And she gives her robe to her parents as a memento. And the moon people put her celestial robe around her. And in that moment, she forgets all of her sadness at leaving and goes. Her foster parents are left in tears and are soon put into bed, sick and old. The emperor orders the soldiers to march up the mountain closest to heaven and burn his letter to her, hoping it would reach her along with all of the things she had given him. He didn't want immortality without her, so he burned the elixir of life, too. Legend says that the word immortality, Fushi, became the name of the mountain, and thus why it is called Mount Fuji today, and that you can still see the smoke from the soldiers burning the letters. Back in the day, Fuji used to be a much more volcanically active volcano than it is today. All of that comes from the story of the tale of the bamboo cutter. And that is said to be Japanese mythology's very first folk tale from the 10th century, if you can believe it. Now, Kage's appearance is based off of Izanami's from the story of Izanagi visiting Izanami in the underworld. Now, if you want to hear that story, watch Anime Origins Susano, my first Anime Origins video. There's a link in the description. Now, on to Kaguya Otsutsuki from the anime Naruto. Kaguya Otsutsuki, in the English spelling, it's spelled with two O's, and, but it's pronounced Otsutsuki, is an alien from another world and the matriarch of the Otsutsuki clan. A millennium before the creation of the hidden villages during a time of endless war, Kaguya came to the land of the ancestors and was brought before their emperor, Tenji. She sought the fruit of the god tree. Identifying herself as the god tree's guardian, she used her powers to wipe Tenji's memories of the encounter and reestablish herself as his concubine. Getting closer and falling more in love with Tenji, she eventually became pregnant. At this time, the land of the ancestors was at war with the land of that, they weren't really big on making very descriptive names back then. The land of that began sending threats over border disputes, and Tenji declared that anybody who attacked the larger nation, the land of that's representatives, was to be executed. Kaguya broke this rule when she was threatened by them, causing her and her assistant Aino to flee while being hunted by their land. Again, the land of that. Losing faith in humanity, Kaguya believed it was necessary to attain godlike power by breaking the great taboo and eating the fruit of the god tree, becoming the first person on earth to possess chakra. Using her newfound power, she single-handedly ended all of the wars. In the anime, it is shown that she did this by casting the infinite Tsukiyomi and releasing a few humans and wiping their memories just so that the human race didn't perish, but having the rest be trapped in infinite dreams. For ending all wars, Kaguya was revered and became known as the Usagi no Megami, or the Rabbit Goddess, later giving birth to twin sons Hagoromo and Hamura. As time went on, Kaguya once again lost trust in the human race, and her absolute power corrupted her absolutely, changing her public image from that of a benevolent goddess to that of an oni or demon. This spurred her madness, leading to committing acts such as turning the prisoners of the infinite Tsukiyomi into her own personal white Zetsu army in preparation for her Otsutsuki descendants coming to steal the chakra of the god tree for themselves. Information about this threat was on a highly encrypted scroll in her palace in an ice dimension. In a fit of rage at her sons betraying her using the chakra she gave them, she combined with the god tree to become the monstrous beast known as the Ten Tails in order to take back the chakra she had given them. In order to defeat the beast, they sealed its chakra inside Hagoromo's body and using the six paths Chibaku Tensei, that's no moon, creating a celestial body that would come to be known as, well, I guess it was a moon. Hamura took over the Otsutsuki clan and went to guard the moon and the Ten Tails remains, which later came to be known as the Demonic Statue of the Outer Path, or simply the Ghetto Statue. Hagoromo stayed behind to teach Ninshu. 
which later became ninjutsu used for fighting, to the world. Not being able to contain all of the ten tails chakra, Hagoromo sacrificed his life to split it into nine tailed beasts using the yin yang release creation of all things technique, and went on to the pure land and presides over the ninja world in spirit form as the sage of the six paths. Before being sealed, though, Kaguya created a form that was her pure will called Black Zetsu, with the agenda of influencing the descendants of Hagoromo, Ashura, and Indra, and on through the Uchiha and Senju clans, with the plan finally coming to fruition in Madara Uchiha. Now, let's draw some parallels. How I see it is that the tale of the bamboo cutter and Naruto are likely two separate timelines, alternate iterations of Kaguya, or simply alternate histories. In both stories, Kaguya comes to Earth from an unmentioned place and is sent back to Earth's moon. The only difference is that in one story, Kaguya rejects the Emperor, while in the other, she gets pregnant and gives birth to Hagoromo and Hamara, meaning that they are the sole difference in the two stories. And yet, as has been said in many time travel stories, Time wants to happen. And in the end, she is, in a manner of speaking, sent back to the moon. But these stories can be set side by side. Kaguya comes from an at first unidentified location. Kaguya inserts herself into world affairs. Kaguya achieves some semblance of power or sway over world leaders. Kaguya presents some erratic or even psychotic behaviors. And Kaguya goes back to the moon one way or another. One I love how they only loosely another. use the tale of the bamboo cutter to tell Kaguya's story in Naruto. That's very interesting. As mentioned before, her appearance is a combination of her nickname the Rabbit Goddess and Izanami's appearance in the Izanagi Visits Izanami in the Yomi story. And the millions that are sent to chase Izanagi out of Yomi are reflected in Kaguya's white Zetsu army. Two very distinct powers of Kaguya come from the lore itself. The infinite Tsukiyomi. Tsukiyomi itself translates to moon, Suki, and underworld Yomi. In Japanese mythology, Yomi was the land of the dead, and Izanagi named the child who was the god of the moon and the underworld. In the game Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, one of Kaguya's attacks in the volcano dimension is called Code of the Flame Rat, a reference to one of the challenges issued to the five princes in the tale of the bamboo cutter. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching again. I'm so glad that you like Anime Origins. This is what I originally wanted to do when I first started doing YouTube. If you're interested in more origins of anime, go back and watch my other ones. I have an anime origins on Sasuke and Itachi's Susano, and I have an anime origins on Nagato's Rinnegan, which is extremely interesting how it ties into Hinduism and all of that religion. Anyways, keep YouTubing YouTubers, don't fight the fro, and always remember to stay legendary. And now, the part you've all been waiting for. あるわらわがこのような分散した I'm